Hello and welcome to part 3 of module 19 in our C language series. In today's session, we are going to focus on adding variable evaluating capabilities to the parser. Now, you know that the parser we built in the last session is able to evaluate expressions containing constants only. Right? And this parser could be used by a desktop calculator, for example. But before it is used with programming languages or more sophisticated calculators or spreadsheets, all of which require variables, we would need the parser to have variable evaluating capabilities. Also remember that programming languages, calculators, spreadsheets all store values in variables for later use. So let's look at how we're going to modify the parser. We we'll start by adding in an array of doubles. This array will have 26 elements. Why 26 elements? Well, because in the assumptions we made at the outset, one of those assumptions stated that variable names would be single letters only. And although the function we're going to write to look up this array will be able to accept more than one letter as part of the variable name, only that first letter will be significant. We will also need a function to handle both numbers and variables. Currently, our store num function is able to handle numbers only. We are checking for that, remember. But we'll modify this function so that it will handle variables as well. Finally, we need a function that is able to look up the value of the variable in the array. Right? So that if we have an expression like this, then the parser should be able to look up the value of a, look up the value of b, perform the arithmetic operation, addition in this case, and assign the result to c. But how do we incorporate assignment of a value to a variable in the parser? So let's look at that assignment process now. We'll of course evaluate the token to see if it is a variable or not. If it is, then we'll call get token again to check whether the next token is an equal to sign or not. If it is not an equal to sign, then we'll return the variable back to the input stream. If it is an equal to sign, then we can proceed to get the next part of the expression. It's important to keep in mind that having a variable name by itself does not mean assignment. And therefore, we need to look for that equal to sign. Right? So now let's go ahead and modify the parser so as to allow it to handle variables. For that, we need to go to code blocks and we'll open the same project. So click on file. Click on open and now I'm directly in the folder of the project. If you're not, if for example, you're in, let's say I have C programs here, go down the list until you see the folder containing your project and then click on the CBP file, a .cbp file, click on that and you will have both your files available. We're going to modify this file first. Let's evaluate expr.c. Now we start by including that array. So double var values or vals. It's going to be 26. Right? And that's going to have all of these elements set to a 0, 0.0. So we just put that in. Once you have 10 there, you can just copy this line. Just copy it twice. And then you can delete four of these, right? So in effect, we'll have 26. Remove that comma after this one and put a semicolon there. Right? Once we've done that, now we need to add in some functions. So here, we'll add a new function called eval expr1. So void eval 
dx pr1 it's going to take double star result right we'll also need a function to look up this particular array so we'll call that find var so double find var and of course that's going to take a string right so char star str we need a third function remember if the token is not an equal to sign right we said that we would return the variable back to the input stream so we call that send back variable or send back var and that's going to be returning a void void send back var and this is going to take no parameters okay so those are the three changes here we have eval expr1 and then we have find var and send back var okay now we'll write the code for find var so we just put that here that's going to be double find var and it's going to take char star str within this function we will check if not is alpha star str then we will call error handler and send in the value 1 right why 1 because remember when this is um, going to be checked for whether it's a variable or not right then we would be calling is delimiter so just to make sure that we do not you know by chance have a bracket there right so we we'll get the message unbalanced parenthesis and then return zero otherwise we will return the value so return var vals and the index will be to upper of star token minus a right so we we'll get a number here when we subtract a from this particular token right so i hope that's clear now we write the next function which is eval expr1 okay so we put that after eval expr so let's put that here so that's void eval expr1 right and of course that's bringing in a parameter double star result within this function we have integer type index and then we have another variable of integer type t token type char temp token of a t byte where we're going to use these we'll see shortly now we check if token type is equal to variable then we're going to use memcpy so memcpy and our destination will be temp token source will be token and number of characters str len of token okay plus one right and t token type is equal to token type 
So we're just saving that current token, the information that is. And then we calculate the index, index equal to two upper of star token, right? Minus A. Okay. Then we call get token again. And we check if star token is not equal to an equal to sign. Right? Then, if it is not, we are going to call send back var. Right? And we we'll use memcpy again. This time our destination will be token and our source will be temp token, right? And we'll have str len of temp token plus one being the number of characters, okay? And of course, token type equal to t token type right now if it is an equal to so else then what we do is we call get token again so we can get the next part of the expression we we'll call eval expr2 of course we need to send in result as argument and then we'll say var vars of index, right? The index we calculated earlier equal to star result. Okay, and then of course return. Right? Now, if the token type is not a variable, then we just call eval expr2 with result okay so i hope that's clear that's eval expr1 so now eval expr will call eval expr1 okay so that needs to be changed Right, so we've written eval expr1. The next function we need to write is we need to first modify store num. So let's do that before we write send back var. Okay, so coming to store num, let's here leave this code as is. Here we're going to see switch. And that's going to be token type. Within the switch, we check case variable. Then what we do is we say star result equal to find var okay so we call find var sending in token and then get token and return right if it is a number so case number then now you can take this code because it's essentially going to be the same. So these four lines, let's do a control X there and bring that code here. Okay, and return. And then of course you can delete these lines of code. Right? Now after this, we will say default. So it's not a variable, not a number. 
then we'll call error handler with zero so control x there bring that line of code here right and that completes the switch and this completes the function right so store num is done now we need to write the send back var function so we'll put that last that's here so void send back var and within this function we'll have char star p let's call it and we'll have p equal to token and for no initialization there as long as we do not have star p being a null p plus plus just move that pointer forward and all we are doing there is prog st minus minus okay so i hope you understood that that completes send back var so now we can run this code and see if it accepts variables as well right so let's build and run so let's enter for example a equal to 10 divided by 2 so we have 5 there now let's enter another expression c equal to a multiplied by g minus 20 so we have minus 100 is that right a is 5 g would be 0, 0.0 Minus 20 would be minus 20, of course. And then we have 5 into minus 20, which is minus 100. Right? Let's try entering an expression with the wrong syntax. So if I say 8, and then I put in the wrong symbol. So you can see, I currently get the message syntax error. But then I go back to accepting another expression so that's what the parser is doing currently we need a better way of handling um, syntax checking for example we want the parser to pause right so that the errors can be handled so let's now go and look at that and talking about syntax checking we all know that syntax errors occur because our code that is the input does not conform to rules laid down or required by the parser right and this is mostly because of human error for example typing errors now, as we saw currently the error handler that we have does display the message syntax error but does not pause the parser or does not abort the parser so we need a better way of handling these errors we can use two functions called set jump and long jump let's take a look at these functions these are the prototypes so we have long jump there that returns a void essentially returning nothing and taking two arguments the first argument is of jmp buff type what that type is i'll come to shortly the second argument is of integer type which is useful to set jump as we will see shortly setJump returns an integer and takes as argument a jmp buff type. Now you can see that the argument name right for setJump and for long jump here I'm talking about the jmp buff type argument they both have the same name and that's important. Okay so you need not name the argument env buff it could be any name but it has to be the same variable name for both long jump and set jump. So let's talk about set jump first. What does set jump actually do? Set jump will save the stack environment or save the state of the stack at the point when it is called. It's important therefore that set jump is called before the call to long jump because what set jump saves, long jump can later use okay what about the jmp buff type now this type if you look at its definition is an array of integers we're not really concerned with what those integers are at this point all we need to know is 
the GMP buff type argument or variable will have enough information that can be used later on by long jump. Now coming to the return value of set jump. Set jump when called directly returns a zero, but when long jump is called, and if it is called successfully, it's as if set jump returned a gain. So like a fake return. And at that point, set jump will have a non-zero return value. Okay, it will never have a zero return value. So let's now talk about long jump. What does long jump do? Long jump will reset the stack to the state exactly as described in the variable env buff. And of course, remember the state as described in env buff is a state that was saved by a call to set jump earlier. After long jump is called and executed successfully, execution will resume at the statement after the set jump call. Right? Important to mention here that if the function calling set jump returns before long jump returns, then the stack state is invalidated. Coming to the integer type argument of long jump status, that is, it will always have a non zero value. And even if it does have a zero value, right, long jump will make sure that set jump returns a one. Okay. Important to note also that to use both these functions, we need to include setjump.h. So let's now go and incorporate these two functions in our code. We go back to code blocks and we will start in main.c first. And here we will include setjump.h. Okay. Once we've done that, then we need a JMP buff type argument. I mean, a variable essentially. So JMP buff, and we can call it just e buff. Okay. Now in the do while loop, after this break statement. You can put in here i equal to, we're going to define that i. i is going to be an integer, of course, so it's going to catch the return value of set jump. So i equal to set jump, and we're going to send in e buff. Right? So define i up here, int i. Okay, now after this call to eval expr, we check if i is not equal to zero, then we print f. This first print f is for your reference. Long jump was called exiting okay next session and then printf you just put in check expression percentage s backslash n comma etr and that will give us the expression and then of course exit one Okay, that's all for the changes in main. Now come to evaluate EXPR. So here at the top, we will include setjump.h. Okay, and 
we will see x turn right gmp buff and that will be e buff okay once we've done that we need to change error handler so come down to error handler and here we'll see if error equal to zero is a syntax error then we we'll call long jump right sending an e buff and four or any number right okay so that's all now if we run this let's build this first and run it let's put in that wrong expression so 10 put in some other symbol and you see now how this stopped right we say check expression and that's it so we can go back to our code and change the syntax okay so again you can play around with this program if you find any bugs you can attempt at fixing them or let me know in the comments right this completes our session and the module for today in the next module we'll talk about artificial intelligence and see so till then take care stay safe bye